quick money saving tips on one income. If you know me, you're like, yeah, Kate, you're a single mom, duh. You only have one income. However, today I'm gonna share a little story time about something I've never shared before. Back when I wasn't a mom at all and I wasn't single. Happy Frugal Friday, friends. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Kate. If you like talking about saving money, budgeting, frugal living, and minimalism, you're in the right place. Today I'm talking about how to save money quick on one income. And like I said in the intro, this is actually something I've never shared with anyone before on the channel. So I'm going to get into that today. Just so you know how this video is going to be broken up, I'm going to have a brief story time followed by tips that I used to get out of and survive the situation. And then lastly, if you've been following me for a bit, you know this is the last day of our 10 week money saving challenge. So I'm gonna share with you how much I saved and I'm hoping that you will stay till the end and then you will let me know in the comments how much you saved so we can celebrate. Story time begins now. Back in 2007, I got married for the first and only time in my life to my son's dad. A year into our marriage in 2008, do you remember 2008 and everything that happened in 2008? Unfortunately, uh, due to circumstances beyond his control, he was laid off. So here we were in our first year of marriage, newlyweds, and suddenly we had one income, which I feel like here we are in 2020 and many of you can probably relate to that, going from one or two incomes down to one or even down to none. So what I wanted to share with you today is what I did to get through that time and save money quickly and not miss a payment during that time because when times are tough, you've got to get scrappy, you've got to make some sacrifices, and you've got to just accept the situation as it is. So this is what I did. The first thing I would consider is where you're living. We were living in a tiny one bedroom condo and there was no way to downsize. I think our place was maybe 700 square feet, if I'm being maybe even generous. Super small, we were already as downsized as we could be, and so that was not something we could change at that time. Cars, now, in 2007, I believe, when we got married, we were like, hey, we have money, just like maybe newly married couples feel. I think back at that time, we were probably making I would say about thirty-five to forty thousand dollars each. So let's even round down a little bit to seventy thousand. Now we had seventy thousand dollars, and we thought we had money. So we each got a car. I believe in two thousand seven. Now I had gotten a little Toyota. What kind was it? It was a tiny little car, but it was great. It was amazing on gas. So my car was like it was a new car, but it was a non-gas guzzler, great mileage, and he got a used car, I think at the time, maybe it was like a 2006 and it was 2007, and we got a used one for him that he really liked. We got a brand new one for me that again, the payments were really low. If we had both bought used, or if we had both paid cash for the car, that would have really helped that we would have had no car payments, but we had already made the decision, we already thought we had money, as many of us do. So we just, my luckily my car was amazingly efficient on gas, so we use my car most of the time. Unfortunately, during this time, it took six months for him to get a new job. So here we were for six months. Did we have an emergency fund? Nope. Did we have a big savings? Nope. What were we gonna do? One of the biggest things we did was we had more frugal slash less food during that time. We continued to be nourished, but we were getting canned food. We were getting discounted food. We were eating very differently than we were before. We were not getting takeout ever. And we just had to, I remember getting these like, 
there were cans of, it was like vegetables, maybe a little bit of meat in it. I can't remember what it was called. We used to call it porridge. And we'd get like two cans and we'd cook it up and we'd have a meal and then we'd save some for later. We had a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches during that time. Um, we would get like discounted cereal. I remember eating like Special K a lot during that time. Was it the most healthy? No, but it was for six months and it was what we had to do. The next thing I remember is I was a dance studio manager and dance teacher. So I had to take on tons of private lessons to make ends meet. So I was working a lot and this was very frustrating as you know if you're the one working and your partner is the one that is out it's it's very it's very hard for you to be killing yourself and your partner not pulling their weight however by the way while we're talking about this i want you to know that you will never ever hear me come on here and speak disparagingly in any way for kaden's dad he and i even though we are not Together in that sense now, we are a team and we co-parent very well together at this point in our life. And I just want you to know, I, I've seen other single moms come on camera and speak ill of their, of their, their past people. You're never going to hear that from me. We are a team still and we, uh, I just want you to be very clear. I have nothing but respect for him and I always will. So when I'm giving you these examples, I just want you to know this was something that happened. This is a, a factual situation that happened and I'm sharing it with you so that you realize that there is hope and when sometimes things go wrong, you can work your way out of it with some hard work, some patience and some sacrifice. While we're on that topic, on a very human level, I just wanted to share some advice that I got from a friend when I was going through this and uh, if you're in a relationship and maybe one of you is out of work or maybe you're going through some other hard thing in your relationship, I just want to share this little piece of advice that I got from actually a male friend of mine who is married and I just thought it was genius at the time um, and I actually kept it and this is what he said and I'm, I'm going to be looking over my camera because it's on my screen behind you. So this is what he said and I just thought, wow, that's so great. He said, regarding love, most people think a successful relationship is 50-50, but when you visualize it in your head, it's actually two fists hitting each other if you're going 50-50. You're constantly butting heads when in fact a relationship should not be fists punching each other, but rather hands fitting into each other like a glove. And in order to do that, you have to be willing to give 60 or 70% to accept 40 to 30%. If you love the person that much that you're willing to give more to accept less rather than meet halfway, then you're good to go. Assuming the other person is willing to do the same, instead of a relationship being a scoreboard two to one, it's a rubber band stretching sometimes in one direction or another, but always together. So when your spouse is flailing, you're giving, 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 and then back when the next, then you're giving, giving, giving. So instead, instead of this, you're always together and you're doing this. You're morphing. One is a little heavier than the other. The other one helps out. It's constant. You see how that is a different visual than 50-50? Mm. I don't know if that helps you in any way, but for some reason that was very comforting to me at the time, especially coming from a man who was in a loving relationship and that saw this and acknowledged that it's not going to always be just 50-50. Sometimes you're given 80 and they're giving 20. And if you're willing to deal with this, <laughs> you can push through. So in the spirit of sacrificing, giving as much as you can when the chips are down, I learned how to cut my own hair at that time. I've gone back to getting my hair cuts later, but during that time, I actually watched a YouTube video on how to cut it. And I started coloring my hair at home also. 
So um, instead of spending, you know, $100 or $80 or even $50 we didn't have back then, I learned how to trim my own hair. I kind of grew it out a little bit longer so that I didn't have to, you know, keep a short styled hair. So I had longer hair. I was dyeing my hair at home. So I was using like a Walmart hair kit for like $6, $7 instead of spending the 50 to 100 that we didn't have. So, and I would do it far less frequently also, but we got by. I completely, back then when you're a newlywed, you're trying to look good. I was still trying to look good, you know, we're always trying to look good, but especially when you're a newlywed, I was getting my nails done. I was getting pedicures. I was doing all that. That all went out the window when we suddenly only had one income to get by on everything. So I didn't get my hair done, my nails done. I did everything at home and that just saved a lot of money and seemed at the time so unnecessary when, again, when you're in a tight financial position, all that didn't seem that important anymore. We wanted to eat and we wanted to keep the roof over our head. No vacations, no extras, no going out. It was a rough six months. I remember going on lots of walks because I would just be so frustrated and walks were free. <laughs> I would go on these long walks and get some exercise and clear my head and and that really helped during that time. Remember when you're going through it that it is a season, hopefully, if you take the right actions to get out of it and you do all the money saving things you need to do. Again, this was for six months. Sometimes it felt like it was lasting forever, but really it was six months and at that point, we made it through, he eventually got a job six months in, and we survived. So I guess my point is, for a little bit, remember it's a season. It's not gonna last forever, and you've gotta be patient. You've gotta be like the rubber band, and maybe you've gotta give, give, give a little bit more for a while. If your relationship gets to the point where it's all you, all the time, and that person is never letting that band come back, then you might wanna reconsider. But if it's for a short period of time, you can get through this. Think positively, do with less for a little while, get through that season, and then rise like a phoenix in the end. You can do it. Hopefully those tips are helpful and just illustrative of the fact that you can get through hard times. And now we're going to move on to our money saving challenge results, which I am so excited to hear from you how much you were able to save in the last 10 weeks when you put your focus on saving money. I think the story we talked about at the beginning of this video and into now is very relevant because when you're putting your mind to a goal and you have to Think outside the box. You've got to go without a little bit. You've got to get creative. You've got to find ways to do things. You're, it's amazing what you can actually get done when you put your mind to it and you've got eyes on the prize. Okay, so I have my little notebook here. For me, now what I consider the saving money challenge to be was kind of either anything outside your nine to five that you did that was a little extra or um, maybe things you did to save money that you don't normally do, you know? So it could be, you could have done this in many different ways. I'm gonna talk about the stuff that I did extra outside of my nine to five first. So between the like affiliate links that I provide with you, that you guys utilize like Fetch, oh my gosh, you guys, when you use my Fetch code, that helps me out so much. Uh, for example, I got about $50 worth of fetch rewards because of you using my code, which for me at this point was going toward Christmas presents. So um, I use that $50 to buy gifts for my family, which means that's $50 that I don't have to use in my actual budget of my own money. These were earned through points. So I am cashing those in to buy Christmas presents for my family members. Um, between fetch, Rakuten, anything that I did affiliate wise that had to do with like YouTube, anything that I made a slight commission from, which you guys know, I don't really do a ton of that. Oh, and the other big thing that was making a difference um, was my, my K-Squad hoodies, mugs, stickers. You guys 
were buying stuff over the last 10 weeks. And so the total between everything that I just said, all the affiliate links, plus the merch, the total was about $900. So thank you. That's mostly almost entirely because of you. And I'm so grateful. So thank you. So those are things that are off of the channel that happen because of the channel. I don't think um, I could share my fetch code with my friends and family, but I don't think uh, it would ever get me to $50. <laughs> I don't think that many people would do it. So thank you. And I hope that you're getting the benefit of using fetch and Rakuten, for example. Those are my two favorite. They're always linked in my videos. If you haven't done it yet, please do it. It gives you free stuff. It gives me free stuff. And it's, and it, and it really, in the end, will save you slash make you money. Not a ton, not a ton. Like I said, oh, so let me just give you an example for Rakuten. So 50 for Fetch and a hundred dollars for Rakuten, which, uh, by the way, Rakuten right now, I think it's like a $40 bonus when you sign up and, uh, use my code. So please, it's free money. Do it, do it, do it. If you're, if you're going to buy stuff anyway, not if you're never going to use that. Uh, but if you use Rakuten, you will get $40 when you spend 40 and I will also get 40. Oh my gosh. The next thing I did that was additional over the last 10 weeks was I taught some dance. I taught a piece of choreography and you know, at the end of, toward the end of the summer, I was teaching some classes. So that roughly came up to about $500, which is wonderful. And then I sold my stove from my old house, which was another $200. And then um, I, I was deciding to include some of my AdSense in here because, well, my AdSense over the 10 weeks, which came up to about $1,900. So, you know, a little under $200 a week through AdSense. Again, that's above and beyond my nine to five, if we're putting it that way. I don't, I don't know. Again, we can go about this many different ways. So if I do the $1,900 from AdSense, $900 from all the affiliates, 500 from dance and 200 for the stove that comes up to $3,500. Wow. So as you know, I work really hard on this channel to get you guys tips, information, inspiration, which leads to transformation for you at, at all times, right? So I work really hard to get this out to you, but without you, none of that would happen. So, so thank you. Thank you so much for being here. The biggest gift you guys can give me is one, taking good care of yourselves and budgeting and just rocking. The next best thing you can do is watch my videos, hit the thumbs up, maybe leave a nice comment. And thirdly, that you can do for free is to share my content with your peeps. Share it on social media. Send a link to a friend, anything that you do that's completely free, but to share, to get the word out, to help other people. If you think my content could be useful to other people. So I just, I really, really have enjoyed growing this year with you all. And I think that's another reason I love K-Squad Sundays, hanging out with you and hearing your progress. Uh, just know I'm here for you and I will keep putting out content as long as I can. And the fact that I can make a little extra money to provide for my son with this and help others, couldn't ask for more. Some of the K-Squad members were out to save 100. Some were out to save 500. Some were out to save 1,000. We all had different amounts. Some were out to save 250. What did you guys get done in the last 10 weeks? Did you save a little money? If so, please let us know in the comments how much you were able to save and what are you gonna use that money for? Of course, the obvious could be the holidays coming up, but maybe it's for something else. Let us know in the comments. I can't wait to read what you all have accomplished and what you're gonna put it toward. If you have not hit subscribe, please do that at this time. Hit the red subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and pound that little bell so that you're notified each time I upload. This is Buns. Buns says, hey K-Squad. I release new videos every single Friday at 9 a.m. And currently we're having K-Squad Sundays live at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please join us. Come join the family. We're so happy to have you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. See you next time, everyone. Bye.